Today we are testing MGB-81. She is an original World War II motor gunboat built by the British powerboat company to go out and defend the British flotillas against attacks from German e-boats. The original engines were Packard engines built in the US of around 1500 horsepower each. They were supercharged petrols. She's now been fitted with triple FBT C13s, uh, new diesel engines. It's the classic Hugh Scott Payne design with the beautiful sloping decks that help give it the rigidity it needs to perform. So it's beautiful, it's fast, and it's heavily armoured too. These were the gunboats, not the torpedo boats. So we've got a big three pounder gun on the foredeck. We've got the twin Ehrlichan machine, machine gun on the back. And then these two lightweight Lewis guns either side as anti-aircraft. More Willie. Again, it's a very physical experience. And now there's another second boost at about 2,000 RPM. You can really feel it starting to charge. We're doing 27, 28 knots now. We're still building. It'll go all the way up to 30, 31 knots. And now the runner's really waiting up. It's a proper physical effort required. And the turning circle, it's about 100 metres wide at this point. So it takes a brave man to go in and attack a battleship on something like this. This is the aft gun on board MGB-81. It's a, a pair of Ehrlichan heavy calibre machine guns. And then there's the main gun on the foredeck, which is the three pounder. It's not a huge combat calibre, we're not talking a massive battleship gun, so you need to get in close. And when I say close, we're talking about within a couple of hundred yards. This is the original navigation room, and you can probably see just how small everything is down here. The helm itself is all outside, so this is the only inside space with any kind of view at all. But what you have to remember is that when these were being used in anger, they were going out at night at 40 knots with basic, basic navigation equipment, crossing the channel, uh, getting involved in some kind of skirmish off the coast of France or Holland, and getting back all in the dark using basic navigation techniques and just this very small little wheel has to do it all from. You can see a little bit from these original plans how the hull shape came together. So you've got a relatively deep narrow V up at the forefoot and it flattens off aft to give that planing surface which is what gave it the speed. It meant that they weren't terrific sea boats in all honesty, they were built for speed. So with that flat stern they would bang a bit but it did mean that they planed relatively early and they went quickly. Uh, I think with the original engines they were good for uh, certainly at least 40 knots. But you can see the triple shaft and propellers, the outer two which are on V drives and the central one direct shaft and three relatively small rudders which is what makes it, what makes it such hard work to steer at lower speeds. And here in the officer's wardroom is a lovely little bit of history that tells you all you need to know about these boats. This steel plate here was an emergency repair made to the hull after enemy gunfire ripped through this relatively thin mahogany outer casing. The gunfire ripped through and in the space of 24 hours or however long it took, they rapidly patched it up with this metal plate. But imagine what it must have been like down here with gunfire coming through, knowing that right behind you are 3,000 litre tanks 
of highly explosive petrol. It gives some idea of how basic the boat is and how brave the men must have been who fought on her. And for me it's been an absolute privilege and I hope what we've managed to do is convey some of the feeling and excitement of what it's like to drive this magnificent craft.